Hi. Hi. Welcome to Mike and Nami Plus. Wait, that's wrong. Oh, okay, I'll do it again. <laughs> we still didn't get. <laughs> okay, what? We have never gotten it on the first try, <laughs> ever in, in the last year. Okay, so, so what we're doing today is that we are reading our high school writing, the things yes. that we wrote in high school. We're gonna start off with a chill one for mine. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not that long; it's just one page. So is my second piece, but this piece is called a barn. And the assignment for my writer's craft that was the course that I took. Yes, it's a grade twelve course that my school offered, but I took it in grade eleven because I fast tracked. So when I wrote this, I was between. 16 to 17. Mm-hmm. I remember you I? reading it to me a long time ago, and it was like, wow, your writing is better than my writing. The instructions for this assignment was for us to describe a barn without any dialogue or mention of people, without any characters. The barn in the distance is shadowed from the bright sunlight by tall, thick trees that appear droopy and gloomy even on a cheerful day. Okay, first of all. <laughs> That sounds so cheesy, but like, for a sixteen-year-old, no, that sounds not bad. Okay, the barn in the distance is shadowed from the bright sunlight by thick. Ah, the barn in the distance is shadowed from the bright sunlight by tall, thick trees that appear droopy and gloomy even on a cheerful day. With a closer view, the many cracks and chips of wood and paint, the color of. Dried blood are visible in the large barn on the large barn gate. With the lifting of a hook, the gate slowly creaks open as it moans with old age. Inside, there are rows of stables and stalls which reek of dried manure and hay. The lack of light and great vastness of darkness made the stables look like despaired faces sitting with anxious expressions. Up above, pieces of the raf- rafters are missing, and many sleeping bats hang await for the night. From the broken window where they leave to seek prey, a ray of light shines through onto a myriad of dust particles falling lifelessly. The decadent walls of wood, covered in mold and moss, stand weak and frail. The scent of dirt and the absence of life hangs in the stale air, along with the dust and bats asleep. The chill of the rough dirt ground sends a shiver up any visitor's spine. When listening carefully, when listening carefully, eerie noises are heard from the barn's many experiences: sounds of screams and explosions. One could just close their eyes and let their brain take them to another place, another time when the barn was young, when it was alive. Where? What? Wait, 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 I don't wait, really wait, wait, get wait. the like at the end there. It's like okay, the history of the barn is that there was violence and war there. But then I'm saying like, oh, just close your eyes and imagine from when it's before that time. I feel like the narrative is like it just is kind of takes you back and forth unclearly. And I noticed that like I have a lot of comma splices, which is like when you either misuse commas or are missing commas. I'm missing a lot of commas. But for a 16 year old, I feel like this is kind of average. That was a pretty emotional roller coaster. I was trying to go through it and yeah, and it I like how I kind of let it. And yeah, hollow. I did like how and I the let light. it. Light. Yeah, like, you know, and then also how it's kind of like you walk through it and you see each piece. Like first you see the stalls and then right. you see the walls and then you see the rafters and then you listen for the sounds. So what does decadent mean? Decadent walls. I don't know. I was thinking about like ten deca. I was, I like, was thinking deca about food walls. Decadent for food. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's like close your eyes and then like shiver from the soil. It's like okay, this place is alive and safe. And all of a sudden screams and explosions. I'm like, I know. Am I supposed to not be like safe girl. right now? Yeah. See. Think about this time in like, the past, and I'm like throwing people. He carried me through a story. It was good. I remember feeling so encouraged when you said that it was really good for a writing piece, and I think I did get a really good mark on it and. Like my teacher really liked it, and she was really strict and harsh. She made people cry every single semester. She was just kind of like an angry, mean person, but she liked my writing. I failed writer's craft. I liked it, but I just didn't have the discipline. To- yeah, to actually do the assignments because yeah, you have to sorry, sit and just write. Couldn't do it. Studies in literature is a lot of reading. I writer's craft too. is a lot of writing. I took both of them and me too. I did fine. But and I failed both of them. You were the one who encouraged me to take those. Seven years later, I'm looking at this. I'm like, mm, there are comma splices. 
you know, you're not really being firm with your wishy-washiness. Yeah. But then at the same time, it's also an art to like control the reader mm-hmm. and how they're feeling and lead them. But mm-hmm. I feel like it was too short to develop detail to lead them in an emotional way. I, I felt like I was just kind of like tossing them back and forth, you know? So this is a poem I wrote for you. It's titled, If I Am of Any Significance, My Love for You. And this was within the first year. Do you have a comma in there? <laughs> yes, I do. Okay, good. <laughs> I wrote it within our first year. This is nine years ago. Oh, I think I was in high school when I wrote this. Okay. My heart yields to those humble. My hands serve those in need. Remember where you came from, for we forget what is dear with ease. Once lost, we all confuse it against those loved and ourselves. Don't forget where you were before. Remember humility before all ways. That if you want more, you must want less. If you seek more, you must seek less. Those who want more will only love less, and those who seek more will only receive less. I want you to know you have pure heart. This is what I want most for you. Is for you to seek your father. Is for you to know your father. My love is but hate compared to his, which is trust, faithfulness, and always is. Woe to me, so unworthy, if any significance or importance, please hear at least this once. Receive these words as a token of love. My only purpose seems to love. To, to love so truly, I can only say, you have a purpose so mightily made, called by the Father so dearly loved. Showers down like the hail, storm rain, covers up like a blanket at night. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I think it's okay. Like, blank, what, what am I writing, are, writing to a five year old here? Uh, <sighs> blanket at night? What is this? What's going on? I'm gonna slap myself now. I was like, oh yeah, you got the rhyme, you got the rap. Mm-hmm. Blanket at night. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. Blanket at night. Wow. I could have done that. Well, was at least you're that? not going like this to your reader. <laughs> Seek his love, for his love is limitless. For the best I can love, is to say God loves mm. and I sign humbly to you and you life. still do that and yeah. that's something that I'm really thankful for because you know that you're not the solution mm-hmm. I'm not the solution and I'm gonna even I'm gonna though fail like, you. I do rely on you a lot mm. and I did rely on you a lot in terms of everything that I lacked as a child well yeah it only made sense because you grew up in an abusive environment and negligent all yeah. the way till you were 14 years old when we met. Mm. So you really had nothing. Like yeah. your your options were me or suicide in mm. a sense. And mm. I saw that right away. Mm. I'm like, you know what? I can be someone positioned here, but it's not about me. It's about God. Yeah. You can be in a position where you can bless me yeah. to God yeah. through you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, that's really what you saw. Do you have more you want to say about your peace? Because speaking of suicide... I really think you weren't really humble and you were always... I also think so too. You were always very needy and you always wanted and you always were self-centered and selfish. (laughs) Great! But you were pure of heart. I think in some aspects I was... I had humility. Yes. And in some aspects I had pride. Yes. But I had humility where people usually would have pride. Yes. Plus you had a pure heart you wouldn't lie out of your own game. Yeah. You wouldn't steal out of your I own. still you hate it. I must say though, Nami is like a tomato. She's red on the outside and red on the inside. She's uh, not like an apple where yeah, 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 yeah. someone's red on the outside and then yeah. different on It's the funny inside. how you say tomato because my hair is red right now. The thing I hate most, aside from people who lie, is people who lie about other people lying. Oh my gosh! That like triggers me. Like you can lie. You can lie about what you did. Don't lie and make someone else a liar. Like that makes me so angry. Mm -hmm. It really makes me angry. I feel like you were able to see that because you look beyond someone's actions and words into their heart. Yes. Your eyes were like piercing. And so the average person didn't like you. Like you Uh were hated Mm -hmm. by like 95% of people probably. Yeah. The interesting thing is like Michael would make comments about adults around us as well. Yes. But in the end, their true nature comes to light. Their heart becomes revealed. Right. Through like future actions. And you were always correct. Right. On. Interesting. Your vision of right. who they are mm-hmm. as as a person in their soul. Mm. 
Yeah, but everyone else like sees status. Everyone else sees action, grades, and right. that kind of stuff. You always just saw the person's heart. Right. Mm. And that's what I value to look into. Yeah. This one's called opposite writing. The assignment for Writer's Craft was to talk about something that has two sides to it, juxtaposing. The flow was really nice from what we were talking about earlier because during this time, I was very suicidal. And as Michael mentioned, like I had a rough upbringing. I was a child with a lot of abuse, abandonment, and negligence. A lot. And I was completely alone. Like I would be sitting in the dark at home waiting for my mom to come past like seven, eight, or nine. It would be dark because I would just be sitting there watching TV since I get home from school and I wouldn't know to turn on the lights because I'm just watching TV. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of daily childhood that I had and it was even worse earlier than my later elementary school years. Like when I was Galahad's age and Zeke's age and a little bit older than that, it, it was actual abuse and witness to abuse. But then it progressed to just negligence because my mom, I don't think she was intentionally neglecting me, but at that time she did the best that she could and that was what she could do because she needed to work. I feel like there are other ways that she could have gone about her raising of me, but I think like in the end it's not in her hands. This piece is kind of like there's no swearing, but I do mention. Anyway, let's just read it. <laughs> Opposite right one. That's the title. Get away from me. <laughs> That's the first sentence. You of all people should know I don't like my personal space. Invade it. It isn't fun having my neck breathed down. Your breath, especially, is so humid and moist. Especially. I am talking about breathing, so of course. Ugh. Do you think I like having the back of my neck wet and sticky every time I'm trying to mind my own business with you around? Well, I don't. I couldn't ask for something more disturbing and gross. Oh, savage Nami. I was even more savage than this, like, back then. You know, there was something I always wanted to ask you. Why did you waste your time trying to be nice when all it does is annoy me? I know you're only trying because you don't even love me. So at first, when I reread this, like right before I load it to my phone, I thought I was talking about my stepfather because he would always like make effort to talk to me and try to be nice and he would always talk to me this close because in Korea, there's no such thing as personal space and that's the culture that he grew up in. He thought he was being friendly with me, but for me, I was like, whoa, you don't even love me. So then why are you like, you're just trying to be nice. But as we read on, that wasn't the case of who I was talking about. So, but you know what? This is the next paragraph. You gotta love me. I'm the one you bore. It doesn't matter if you don't like the other half of me, which you don't because you divorced it. It. Making me a fatherless child. I'm so like, this is so like entitled. You are still gonna have to love me. You can't keep complaining about me if you decide to marry an alcoholic, have sex, and then run away with the child. You like so relentless, so savage. You brought me here. You caused me pain, which I did not ask for at all. I would have been happier an egg and a sperm. And you're the one complaining. <laughs> no, no. Okay, can I say here though, like as a child, I had always been suicidal. And it wasn't until this year that I did write this piece that was the peak of my depression and suicidal tendencies but even as early as third grade i would tell my mother things like i wish i was never born i wish i could go back in your tummy because she always mentioned her c-section having me i would be sobbing and wailing and trying to shove physically shove my head back into her stomach that's not normal for a child like there's something seriously wrong with this child if those are the behaviors that you're seeing from the child well it makes sense because you grew up in the first four years seeing violence in the home. Mm. You wouldn't even have time with parents because you were in daycare in which they abused you, threw yeah. you in dark rooms and hit you. Yeah. And then running over here to Canada as refugees, your mother still had to work. And then I'm just completely alone And you're still. with strangers. Yeah. All the way till, you know, sun falls. Every day. And then before I even reached 10 years old, my mom in her own discernment and judgment 
thought it's better not to have me with strangers at all. Mm. So it's better if I'm alone completely. Mm-hmm. But I think in Canada, legally, you're not allowed to leave a child unattended without an adult unless they're over the age of 13. But I don't know if my mom knew that law because in Korea, people leave children that are four years old alone at home. Right. For her, I think there's that cultural and like legal thing that she didn't know. But yes. Basically, it makes sense that you would say those kind of things mm. and write this in emotion and mindset that you Especially were. at the peak of my distress. Yes. Well, <laughs> all we know is that you're stuck with me. You lost your chance to throw me away, abandon me after you decided to have me. You're stuck and you gotta love me. You gotta. Oh my god. Why are you talking like this? If you don't, this is the next paragraph. I'm gonna make you like me. I'm gonna make you like me more than anyone you've ever liked before. You know what I'll do? I'll clean my room. I'll clean my room. I never clean my room. <laughs> Michael came over to clean my room because my room was like, um, yeah, that's right. I'll make it cleaner than you've ever seen it before. <laughs> you know what else I'll do? do? Have you heard this before? Okay. I'll brush my teeth and wash my face every day. You're supposed to do those things anyway. I'll save up my money and make my bed. Just please, please don't hate me. I'll try my best for you to like me. What's wrong with me that you don't like? Is it my blood? I'll get a blood transfer. Will that help? I'll exchange my personality and go to anger, ther- anger management therapy. You can see what type of person I was. I promise I won't yell at you anymore. I promise I won't hit you. Just please don't hate me. I want you to like me. No one ever likes me is supposed to be ever. You should like me. Won't you like me? I said I'll change. Won't you like me? Why won't you like me? What is your problem all the time? (sighs) Why do you always... Oh my god, I should stop recording. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> Let me continue. Why do you always have to be so selfish? Don't you care how I feel? You never cared about me. And you never understand. You're so annoying. Go away and get away from me. Go away. That's the end? Yeah, that's the end. So that's what I meant. How it followed into the poem. Because that's why 95% of the people didn't like Nami. Because on the outside, she was like a spiky <laughs> iron ball. I was like a sea urchin, like so yeah. spiky and gross looking. That every person that she came in contact with, they would just get offended and they would hate Nami. But what I saw is that I saw a very hurt person who only knew how to hurt people. But in that pain, <sighs> In that deep, deep pain, there was someone so pure, a diamond so good that it just needs a lot of time to work with. And so not only you, but your mother also went through a lot of pain. Yeah. Both of you did. Yeah. I can't blame her, but she's the only one that I could have blamed. (laughs) You know what I mean? She was the only person in my life, like, ever. But she was, like, such a rock too Mm. but she was only a rock because god was using her as a rock because he was the rock like you but also she made a lot of mistakes with me she was always treating me like her possession Mm. one of the hugest flawed things about korean parenting is that koreans think and like i think a lot of non-korean people parents think as well like their children are their possession and they're their assets that can benefit them in the future not at all like do you even know what a person is like you know what i mean and she never asked me how i'm doing she never asked me how i'm feeling she never asked me my opinions about anything just even casual talk she always just like told me what to do Later on, she told my sister, Oh, I was so grateful that Nami wasn't the type of child to complain or talk about 
events at school and complain about that. And my sister's like, how can you be so dumb? Like, mom, like, can you not see? Are you really that blinded? That's exactly what hurt her is that she couldn't tell you those things because my mom never listened. I kind of had that learned helplessness, Mm -hmm. like just the learned apathy for my schooling to I always just got average. Every single one of my teachers always said in parent-teacher interviews, Nami is smart. If she actually puts effort in, she will do well. Because when she puts zero effort in, she's, she gets average. What's the reason why I was so apathetic? It's because there's no one to encourage me, to guide me. My mom would just come home. and She's too tired mentally. I don't remember her ever yelling at me, but she told me later, like, the reason why you yell a lot is because that's how I raised you. Like, I yelled at you a lot. And... Like, I see myself in you when you do get out of control. Now, this is the very last piece. I also wrote this. This is before we got married. It was eight years ago. We got married six years ago. Yeah. And we dated for three years. This is within the first year. It might even be the earliest. A healthy relationship is when you two come together as one and grow. This growth results in an overflow and redirected energies from each other to others. Ask yourself, what is your couple image? Are you growing or draining? Interesting. Mm. I can't believe I wrote this. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, I never, a couple image, I never used that word ever since I read it here again. <laughs> A relationship is when two people are not trying to meet each other's needs but meet a third person's need. This third person is the relationship. In marriage, two people join into one body, a new body. This new body is the body that needs nourishment and care. Marriage is not about me and you but we, a new body created. A relationship is not much different from a marriage. We must treat it with utmost respect and care. We have a senseless view of what a relationship is. A relationship is deep and personal. It leaves an imprint on your life. It is much too dangerous to get used to being hurt or to shut our emotions away. It is also dangerous for the relationship to become our master or to have our emotions carry you through. Relationships are important. What about casual dating? What is your reason for casual dating? Relationships are sacred in a sense that Even the ability of having a relationship has been given by God. Relationships are not about us. And so we must ask and seek the true purpose for relationships. It is important to nourish and care for the third person being the relationship. But above that is loving God. God, the sustainer of life, is holding the relationship. Everything is a gift and can be taken away, even the relationship. Set boundaries and redirect your energies to first get to know each other as friends. Deep and meaningful friendship leads to long-lasting, powerful relationships. If you really care and love, then get to know the person. Love the person for who they are. Look at their heart, not their personality, but their heart. I remember not this poem, but I remember that concept. Hmm. And I remember it making such a deep impression on me. Because the general idea is everyone enters into a relationship because they like each other and they like things about each other. Things about each other not for the other person, but because they like those things. They want to bask in that likingness. But then the concept of the relationship being a separate being that you have to take care of is something that was like, oh my gosh, to me back then. Because it's so important. It's like a child that you have to take care of extra or a pet that you have to take care of extra. You can't just keep thinking about, oh, you didn't do this for me or like you're not understanding me or whatever. Like you work on things that need to be worked on and you take care of it. I don't have much understanding for, oh, we just went our separate ways or it just didn't work out Mm. and we weren't a good fit for each other. Why is it always about you and them? Like, what about your relationship? What about this thing that you have to work on? Because that's for everyone. Yes. For everyone in terms of like with your friends, with your family, with your siblings or cousins, with your pets too. Like you work on that relationship and you build it and build that emotional connection the time the quality time yes i think it's interesting looking back and kind of unpacking and opening up revealing how our mindset and our thought Mm, and approach mm. was to relationship because there's many people who have been questioning or or they're attacking or misunderstanding us in our age gap video and i understand of course 19 and 14 is outrageous i have to say that 
Yeah. And I even believed that myself during that time. Mm. But at the same time, I firmly believed that it's better to pursue that outrage mm. to sustain this mm. in all that the complexity that it was mm. and follow through it and be an example. And I know it's an offensive example, mm. but I believe that there comes good, there could yeah. be bad, but there's also good. This is something that I say a lot too, but like if it wasn't for God working through you, in my life at that time at that time in exact perfect timing for mm. everything even things that people would have said are mistakes if they were not at the perfect times i would not be here like mm. i was not okay and i don't think that means because people misunderstand and they think what i'm saying is if you're unstable find someone stable and cling to them tie them down so that they become your security like that's not what I'm saying what I'm saying is God saved me right. through you. Right, and not, I don't. It wasn't me. Yeah, and in fact, I disappointed you more. <laughs> but it was just I can only credit God. I think that's mm. for me too. And I think it's hard. Normally, I'd be open with talking about issues like these things and and suicide and depression and stuff. Mm. And people do say like sometimes it's better to not mention it at all because it could trigger people and it could give people more ideas. But I think there are just people for a mysterious reason who just struggle with it, struggle with depression, struggle with this haze of issues because that's the cross that they have to bear and that's the burden that they they just have to face personally. That's mm -hmm. the battle that they have to face. Yes. My message is everyone has something that they struggle with. Mm. It's our duty to work on it and to see the grace in our circumstances it's not to be done alone it has to be done with others community life growth, overcoming healing, suffering yeah. healing huge difficulties mm. it's never to be done isolated it has to be done together yeah. shared yeah. with others and that is the most important factor yeah it's to be in community with others and to do to go through it together yeah in presence of, with with others Thank you always for your support and your ability to see our hearts too because that's also a blessing mm -hmm. and a gift that you have. We find a lot of people don't have. Mm -hmm. They just don't have the emotional, mental, spiritual, physical capacity for compassion, right? understanding, or the benefit of the doubt. They don't have what you have. We're really thankful for like all of you who stick with us and see our hearts and affirm our direction we always want to keep ourselves accountable to you as well yeah just thank you for being part of our family and for always not your family <laughs> thank you for all your support in all ways and we'll see you next time